okay, yeah. let's go. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to your first Dubai Nurses webinar. It's so lovely to see so many of you on the call this morning. Obviously, we met all of you uh, a couple of weeks ago in lovely Dubai. We had such an incredible time out there um, meeting all of you um, and hearing about your experiences and your lives. Uh, it, it feels like so long ago now, but it was only a few weeks ago. We really can't wait to get out there to to see you and meet some more of your friends um, and other people that are interested to come and work in Devon. So we're going to spend some time this morning talking about Devon. Um, I know that some of you uh, knew which hospital you wanted to work at when you do come to Devon, but we're going to go through each hospital in turn, um, talk about wonderful Devon and why it is the best place in the world to live and work. Uh, but firstly, I'm just going to go round and we're going to introduce us. So most of us were in Dubai, so you've met us all in person. Um, so obviously my name's Carly and I'm the Transition Lead Nurse for the Devon International Recruitment Alliance. And Laura? Thanks, Carly. Hi, everyone. My name's Laura. I work alongside Carly and I'm the Project and Pastoral Support Lead. So nice to see you all. And uh, Tracy? Hello everybody, um, I'm sure most of you have uh, met me last week, but I'm Tracy Collins. I'm the International Nursing Workforce Lead for Devon and work with Carly and Laura and Vicky, Victoria and Emily. So it's so exciting to have you all on the call today. Uh, Vicky. Hello, my name's Vicky. Um, you all met me last week when I was on reception. I am a recruitment partner, partner and I look after University Hospital Plymouth. Thank you. And Victoria? Hello everyone. I also had the joy and pleasure of meeting uh, some of you when we were in Dubai. Um, and I am also a recruitment partner. I look after the Royal Devon and Exeter and North Devon Healthcare Tr Foundation Trust Hospitals. Thank you. And Emily? Hi everyone. Sadly, I wasn't in Dubai, but it's lovely Aww. to see you all this morning. Aww. Um, I'm also a recruitment partner and I work predominantly for um, Torbay and South Devon Foundation Trust. Nice to see you all. Lovely. Thank you very much. So um, pop any questions that you've got in the chat um, and we will answer them as we go along. So this is an introductory webinar to Devon um, and our plan is we will host webinars probably every three weeks. So you will be you will get sent other links to them. And we've got great agendas planned for you over the next few months. And as you start to think about your arrival to the UK, obviously some of you have got your English and will be arriving sooner. Um, but we are absolutely here to support you and hold your hand through this process. We realise it's very daunting. There's lots of paperwork and things that you need to submit and we are here to support you. So again, pop your questions in the chat. I will answer them as we go. So we're just going to start with a little presentation about Devon. Lovely. Thanks, Laura. I don't know if you could start the slideshow. Perfect. So firstly, a big welcome to Devon and congratulations on making Devon your chosen place to work. Um, all of us live in Devon and, um, you know, nearly all of us have lived here all of our lives, uh, raised families. It's one of the most beautiful parts of the world to live in, as you can see from that photo. We are fortunate enough to have some of the top beaches in the world. Um, and look at that beautiful beach there. And, and we are surrounded by coastline um, in Devon. The next slide. So where is Devon? So um, a lot of you asked that actually when we were in Dubai, so it's always a good idea to know exactly where we are. So we're right down in the southwest of England um, and it's probably about, if you're driving, maybe three hours from London or about an hour and a half on the train from London. So the nearest airport is Bristol or Exeter. Um, Bristol is about an hour away from us, so um, but if you're talking about long haul flights, most of you will fly in to Gatwick or Heathrow, which is in London, um, and then transport will be arranged for you and bring you down to Devon. So we are within easy reach of international airports. Um, 
you know, we've got really good transportation links to London and we very often have to jump on the train to go up to London. We can be there within an hour and 40 minutes. Um, but we're also in a beautiful part of the world. It's a rural location. Um, we've got some beautiful cities and towns and again, beautiful beaches. Next slide. So we actually recruit for six NHS hospitals. That's National Health Service. So in the UK, we have a National Health Service and that's care that is free for our population. OK, there are no charges for that. So we are recruiting for six hospital trusts. Um, some of them are city hospitals and larger hospitals with specialities like trauma and orthopaedics, uh, cardiac surgery, and some of them are smaller in our smaller towns. Um, and have general medicine, surgery. Um, they all have emergency care and critical care departments. We are also recruiting for mental health. So if you know of any mental health nurses, then point them in our direction. And next slide, please. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hand over to the recruitment partner. Um, so if you choose to go to UHP, we call it, which is University Hospital Plymouth, um, then you will be directly uh, contacting our recruitment partner uh, for that trust, which is Vicky, as you all know, because she arranged all of your interviews in Dubai. So I'm going to hand over to Vicky and she's going to talk about beautiful Plymouth. Thanks, Vicky. Okay. Hi, everyone. So, yeah, I'm the recruitment partner for University Hospital Plymouth. Now, University Hospital Plymouth is one of the Devon's largest hospitals, offering some specialist services across the whole of Devon and Cornwall. Um, so. The accommodation that we if you choose to go there is about 10 minute walk from the hospital um there's lots of things around shops and things like that around the oski training center as well is about 10 minute walk so it's all very close by which is amazing and it's got so much that we can offer you um so Plymouth Hospital is one of the leading transition hospitals they are working hard with partners across Devon and to improve services for all patients. So if you're coming along, that'd be one of the things that they would like to inform you. It's a big hospital, so it employs around 7,000 staff and volunteers, um, and they do focus a lot on research and things like that. So it is a good hospital to go to if you're looking at to sort of progress your career and to do more sort of research or go back to university and do some more things. There's lots of things they can offer you there. So yeah, so if, if you have any questions about Plymouth, please do email me. Now, a lot of you will have my WhatsApp number, but unfortunately, when I got off the plane, um, it slipped out of my bag, so I don't have my phone on me at the moment, but it is being sent back to me next week. So I will apply to everybody's WhatsApp messages there. But if you have any questions, please do email me. You've got um, our Devon IR Hub email address and all your offer letters. Um, any questions about Plymouth or anything I can help you with, please do email and I will get back to you. We're just going to show a little video now about Plymouth as Britain's ocean city, so um, enjoy. Thank you. 
lovely. Thank you, Vicky. So great video there showing uh, some of the bits and pieces and exciting things you can take part with if you decide to go to Plymouth. Now, obviously, as we said, Plymouth is a very large hospital in a city um, and they've got the real speciality um, centres of care there in the hospital. For example, neurosurgery, uh, cardiothoracics. Um, so if you're currently working in one of those areas and want to go and you really want to continue working in that area, it may be that UHP forms part of that decision. Uh, so we're just going to move on to talk about the Royal Devon and Exeter NHS Foundation Trust. I'm going to hand over to Victoria. So if you decide to go to Exeter or Barnstable, you will be um, in close contact with Victoria. So I'm going to hand over. Thank you very much, Carly. So, yes, I um, have the great pr privilege in dealing with the Royal Devon and Exeter Hospital. I'll start there. So Exeter is, um, it's a city location, um, but it's actually what I would call a manageable size. So it's not a huge city like um, the likes of Birmingham or London. Um, it's a city where you can um, have the benefit of the shops, perhaps restaurants, nightlife on your doorstep, as it were. But you're also very close to be able to leave the city and get out into the countryside or go to the coast um, and, and visit the beaches, that kind of thing. So nice location. Schools are good, good for families. Um, it has it has kind of the best of all worlds, I would say. So that's just a bit of broader context about um, Exeter as a location itself. I went to um, my secondary school it, time was spent in Exeter, so I've got some um, insight into uh, living and working in that area. So the Royal Devon and Exeter is a large teaching hospital, obviously city location. Um, it also provides community uh, services um, across the area, across the area of East Devon, actually. So it's quite a quite a significant um, uh, space in terms of uh, um, scale. Um, it provides specialist services, so it's got things like renal, um, orthopaedics, um, and I will say that I have um, recruited a couple of paediatric nurses um, to the Royal Devon and Exeter. Um, any paediatric nurses who are with us today, if you wish to work in that specialist field, please ensure that you have done your paediatric um, child, children's path CBT not the adult path CBT. So that's if you want to remain within the paediatric specialist field. I just thought I would call that one out. Um, so yes, Royal Devon and Exeter, fantastic location, um, but large, busy teaching hospital um, providing services right across the community. It's really well regarded, actually. Um, yeah, and there's a picture of the lovely cathedral. So <laughs> what's not to like? Historic cathedral dating back, I think, to the 11th century. So there we go. It's pretty old. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Thanks, Victoria. I've got a lovely video to play of the yeah. Royal Devon and Exeter now. Super. finish there so just stay where you are we can release the finger itself what we're trying to do is protect the arteries the healthcare is a demanding environment to work in every day throws up a new challenge the red phone can give us 20 minutes warning for a major incident of cardiac arrest How are you feeling? we have no idea what's going to happen you just come on shift and you wait and see It's really important to be a team player. We work with everyone you could possibly imagine here, ODPs, mental health, paediatrics, community services, occupational therapists. There's, there's a strong team spirit and I think it's essential for anywhere in any healthcare service that that, that is maintained. It's hugely important that we all work well together. Hi ladies. One of the things I really get a buzz from in this job is dealing with really difficult situations and being able to turn around and hopefully get a good outcome. How's Mr. Adicott today? Yeah, fine. When you see people responding and you can manage their illness so that you improve the quality of their life, that is a truly, truly rewarding thing to do. When we get feedback that we've made a real difference to the care of that patient or we've we've helped to elucidate a diagnosis that they were struggling with, that's really rewarding. Knowing that you've impacted on someone's life in a positive way, just knowing that you've done your best for them is very rewarding. Okay, we're just going to get you on to try and get you One of the big parts of my life is training. 
know, there is room to grow if you want to grow. There's opportunities every day to, to broaden your horizons. We have a good training programme for anyone that starts in the department that everyone's involved with, lots of study days, lots of learning of new skills and support. I think that really tells of a good department because they're willing to invest time into developing the next generation. Innovation is a key part of working in the emergency department. Um, so we encourage people when they come to work here, if they feel that they can make a difference, we're interested in those ideas. We're sort of up there in, with, in terms of new technologies and, and state-of-the-art surgery. We do it for the love, don't we? <laughs> I absolutely love this job. I think it's easily the best job I've ever had. I really, really enjoy being a matron. It's a lovely place to work. It, there's a really strong sense of family here. Um, everyone looks after you personally and professionally. People are accessible. You know who people are as you walk down the corridor. People are friendly. Everyone says hello and smiles. If the staff are enjoying their work and finding it a friendly environment, hopefully that rubs off on the care that we deliver to the patients here. You form relationships and you form relationships with people you work with closely. And the fact that they're all flexible, they're all willing to go the extra mile, and they're all very supportive means that we can have what we want, which is patient care at our focus. How are you today? Okay, fine. Mate. You're feeling a little bit better. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I'll see you again. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Lovely, thank you. So that's given you a little bit more information about the Royal Devon and Exeter. And as Victoria says, uh, another city. Oh, a bit more. Sorry. Sorry. And as Victoria says, it is a city, a cathedral city, um, and the cathedral really is stunning. Um, lots of history with Exeter. Um, yeah, you won't be disappointed. So we're just going to move on now to talk about Torbay Hospital. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Emily. So if you choose to come to Torbay, then Emily will be in direct contact with you and will support you with documents and part of the process. So thank you, Emily. Um, Torbay is amazing. Um, I have to say I love Torbay. I live in Torbay. It's got the best of everything. It's got it's it's situated the hospital is about a 15 20 minute walk from the coast which is stunning there's a beautiful marina there there's lots of walks great for community um great for families lots of lots of schools actually in in torbay um it's a fantastic hospital in fact it's the first trust in england to join up hospital care with community health services and adult social services so it's it's really you know it's really at the forefront um it has about it employs about six six and a half thousand staff including doctors nurses therapists social workers and so on it's it's a good it's a it's a lovely size hospital and a great community um in which to live um so i will basically be helping you every step of the way you can contact me contact me by whatsapp or email i'll help you with all your documentation um and just really make it a very smooth process for you um, including you know sorting out your visas if you have any questions about visas etc you can come to me and i can i can help you through that process um what else can i say that's probably about it choose torbay <laughs> thanks emily i've got a nice i've got a nice torbay video to share as well so that will just top it off Uh, my name's Adam. I am a staff nurse at Torbay Hospital. Uh, I've been here... Uh, my name's Adam. I am a staff nurse at Torbay Hospital. Uh, I've been here for almost two years now. I work in the A&E department. We're the front line of the hospital really, so we take all of the ambulances, all of the people who are really poorly or really injured. The part of the job I like the most is that every day is never going to be the same. You're exposed to a lot. We get anything from strokes to major traumas, you name it, it comes straight to us. So we're always looking for the patient's best interests, um, get them fixed and get them home. We do that using a multidisciplinary team. So 
such as uh, physios, OTs, as well as the doctors and nurses that help out. So being a relatively small hospital, we cover quite a big area. Um, it's, it's busy, but that also means your shift goes very, very quickly. It can be very challenging, but at the same time, it's very rewarding and you learn a lot. The team I work with are really supportive. We're all there for each other. We're all there for support. It's such a good team. I don't know what I'll do about them now. They've offered me lots of training since I've been here. Torbay Hospital has a fantastic uh, training facility uh, with uh, simulation suites. So the simulation suite almost feels like a real environment. It's somewhere you can practice learning the skills that you learn on paper and put them into practice. Um, I've managed to progress to be one of the most senior nurses uh, in the a department. Living and working in Torbay is great. I do work a lot of time, but I love it here. It's a really, really nice trust, friendly staff, supportive, but when I'm off, I'd like to get down the beach, go surfing. Throughout the summer, I'm constantly playing volleyball down the green. I couldn't imagine living anywhere else now that I live here. Hello, I'm Deidre Frank. I'm Community Nurse Team Manager for the Ivy Bridge and the Elm Community Nurses. I manage a 30 strong team of nurses over a 256 square mile of rural countryside. We cover six surgeries in that and we can see anything from 90 to 120 patients a day. Where we fit into the organisation is that, the, that we are there to help maintain people in their own home as well with their independence. Um, we, we prevent crisis admission and we have long-term condition um, matrons who look after patients also in their own home. Um, we do a lot of end of care, um, end of life care for patients whose preferred place of care is to be at home and to enable us to do that we work very very closely with the GPs and the hospice Curie teams, um, social services, um, we, even our therapists are there to help us during that time. I've been doing this for 40 years and community nursing has is just a different animal altogether now. The nurses are loan workers, they need to be extremely competent at what they do, um, they need to be confident because they have to be the decision makers there in the home because you go into that home on that day and there is a blank canvas and you walk through that door you have no idea what's happened. You know that you have a, um, some intervention to do but you don't actually know um, there might have been some um, accident or other that needs to be sorted out. So you have to be extremely organised and capable uh, with the resources available to you to be able to manage that so that the patient does get the right care at the right time in the right place. Um, and the community nurses are very capable individuals who actually manage to do that. We encourage our patients to manage their, their care themselves. So we, we actually design the care plan with them so that it is a manageable, so that they will be able to reach those goals. And with constant evaluation and assessment, um, their care is evaluated and, 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 and together we we get some results um, with trying to care for the patients properly at home. Um, we have to make sure that that care is ultimately the safest care that they can get. 
um, at with with the appropriate resources, and they can get and be seen by the, the appropriate people to give them that care. That's a good time to stop that one because it's quite a long video. That's lovely. Thank you, Laura. So um, obviously that told you a little bit more about Tall Bay and as Emily said, another beautiful part of Devon to consider when you're making your decision. So um, so we've got to talk about Northern Devon Healthcare Trust now. So we're going to take you back to Victoria um, and Victoria will be your recruitment partner should you decide that North Devon is the place you want to be. Um, so North Devon Hospital is situated obviously in the north of Devon as the title <laughs> said um, and the hospital is based in Barnstable. Um, so I'll hand over to Victoria. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so North Devon Healthcare Trust um, is, uh, um, as Carly said, situated in the northern part of Devon, quite obviously. It is um, a smaller and more rural location um, compared to, say, the city locations that we've discussed earlier. So if you love um, the countryside, if you enjoy um, perhaps dealing with or have experience of um, being in a rural setting, I know I've spoken to some nurses who who, who have, then this could be the location for you. Just looking at the image there, those beaches, my goodness, I went to North Devon um, and did a visit last summer just to take it all in. And wow, the beaches are absolutely stunning. Um, they are, people can surf at them. Um, there's just big expanses of beautiful uh, sort of white golden sand. Um, North Devon is actually famous for its um, beautiful coastline, um, country walks um, and fantastic beaches, obviously. Um, it is definitely a uh, an area that increases in terms of population size during um, during our holiday uh, times. So you would expect to see that reflected in um, the, the patients that are being received um, into the hospital. But North Devon, um, uh, although it is a, a sort of smaller hospital in relative terms, um, I've had I've been told over and over again how friendly it is, how if you were to join uh, North Devon, you know, you can make a difference, um, uh, which I think is a really lovely uh, sort of unique selling point, if I can put it like that. Um, it does provide acute services, but there's also a big emphasis on um, the community uh, nursing side of things. So anybody who has experience of um, uh, community um, nursing, it, it may be something that we could explore um, f with you uh, in terms of North Devon. It's some, certainly something we're looking to um, uh, uh, explore ourselves um, in the coming months. So. Yes, yeah, so the, it caters for a large rural population across North Devon. Um, schools are great. Um, all, all other people within the UK head down there for their um, holidays if they can, if they're lucky enough. So that gives you an idea about how fantastic it is. Hmm, I think one of our colleagues, perhaps the lovely Carly Boyce here, may live in, <laughs> in North Devon and may be its biggest fan. But but if she is, then I'm certainly the, the second biggest because it is it is a fantastic place. Um, so if the countryside uh, location, more rural location, uh, small friendly hospital is for you, then North Devon could be your um, hospital of choice. Um, and I will be supporting you with that. So the two hospitals I work with are Royal Devon and Exeter and North Devon Healthcare Trust Hospitals. So I will be supporting you um, with documentation, queries, questions um, and the process in fact bringing you in to um to the point where you come and work in our fantastic hospitals um i will be your point of contact for those two locations um and i really look forward to uh to bring you to the uk what can i say it's um extremely exciting whichever of our hospitals you choose um devon is um the best uk location that you can that you can select i can see lots of nods around the team so yes we <laughs> we genuinely mean this this isn't a sale, sales pitch <laughs> oh, we left off Devon. and we um, also fun fact we were talking about this morning weren't we it's the yes. 12th 12th beach for surfing in the world it's just in been named world, as yes. the 12th 12th best beach for surfing in the world is in north devon so yeah. Can't wait to get on our boards. Yeah, That'll be right. the next group outing. <laughs> <laughs> so we've also got a lovely video to share um, with you for North Devon Healthcare as well. So I'll play that one.
Oh, it's on mute, Laura. So did you say it's on, on mute? Can't hear anything. Oh, OK, sorry. Apologies. Give me a second. came down and worked in Devon straight away because it's where I always wanted to be. Devon is a fantastic place to live, it's got everything. It's a, it's a playground for adults and it's also a really friendly place to live. If you're into the outdoors, into surfing, cycling, walking, you know, it's all here and whatever you want, it's on your doorstep. So if you finish work at five o'clock in the summer, you can spend a few hours at the beach without much trouble at all. So, you know, the work-life balance is really excellent. It's a fantastic place to work. It's a, it's a small hospital. It's a very friendly hospital to work at. So everyone knows each other and it's very easy to get things done with that sort of personal contact. Yeah, I think uh, team dynamics is excellent. There's always supervision, there's always positivity and you never feel alone. I think that for me is one of the best things that you've just got such a great support network. The hospital offers all the challenges that you'd look for within a surgical career, but at the same time, there's the most dynamic and outstanding surrounding countryside. The real attraction of North Devon is the climate that we're in and the, the landscape. It's also a great place to raise kids and to raise a young family. I live a bit further south on the edge of Dartmoor. From where I live, I can be up the top of Sorton Tor with my kids within half an hour of leaving my house, and that's really quite special. We're a very research active trust, so we have annually a recruitment of about 700 patients into clinical trials across 70 different studies. And that's across many, many fields of medicine, surgery, and as well as doctors uh, heading up research, we have allied health professionals doing so as well. So we have physiotherapists, we have nurses who are heading up studies. So yeah, we have a very diverse portfolio. We're one of the top bowel cancer screening programs in the country. Even though we may be a smaller hospital, there is room here for growth and to ensure we're at the cutting edge of NHS care. There's fantastic opportunities for trainees coming through the hospitals, as well as consultants looking to work here. There's the opportunities to learn some complex operating at the same time in a fantastic location. The staff are really friendly and you really feel valued. The hospital is small enough to have a really tight-knit, close community team. However, it's big enough to allow you to progress wherever you want to do, take your learning wherever it wants to go, and just have the best career that you possibly could have. I think it's fantastic being able to live in an area of the country where for children there's a very outdoors atmosphere, houses are affordable, schools are fantastic. I decided to move down here, away from the hustle and bustle of the city and it's just so much more relaxing. Everybody is so friendly. We have the surf which is on our doorstep. You've got the beach and you've got all of the Exmoor as well. So it's perfect, good balance between work and lifestyle and generally but pretty good summer weather here. So I'm pretty happy about that. Within moments of leaving the hospital, you can be either in the water, on the beach or up on the moors. It's the hills and the sea that I love about uh, the West Country. Definitely, this is one of the most beautiful places I have ever seen. I came and worked at North Devon District Hospital and I don't want to leave. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Thank you. And I just love the last sentiments on that video. Yeah. Um, I come to Devon and I don't want to leave. And I think 
all of us, the whole team will agree with that. Um, yeah, you, you've made the right choice coming to Devon. So what I'm going to talk about now is, um, so we've talked about the sort of recruitment process. I want to talk to you a little bit about the pastoral support that you will receive um, during your onboarding to come and work in Devon. So let me just screen share. Okay. Right, can you see that ladies? No, but I'll try and share it. There we go. Got it? Yep. Can everyone see it? Because I can't. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it, that, I can see it. Yes, yeah. You probably want to put it from beginning on the PowerPoint, Carl, um, Laura. How do you mean? It, put it from it the beginning. Is. Yes, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I can see it now. Yes. OK, so. Obviously, um, as part of your offer, <clears throat> you will get full support from start to beginning. So you've met our wonderful recruitment partners and they will help you with the process of getting the documents in um, and all of those questions about which organisation you want to choose to work and where you want to live. Um, but also just going alongside that, you will get a significant pastoral support offer. So I'm going to go to, can I do next screen or do you have to do that, Laura? You can. Yeah, that's fine. Right. OK, so we really recognise that it's this bit that's so important for all of you and for nurses that are making that decision to come and work in a different country. Um, we recognise it's very emotionally tiring. Um, and on top of that, we've all worked just worked through a global pandemic, which is still ongoing. So we're all quite tired, aren't we? And we, we recognise we really need to wrap our arms around you um, to make sure that you feel really valued and safe. Um, we want you to be happy. We want you to stay and work in Devon. We want to see you progress in your careers. You know, we recognise that you are our senior nurses of the future in the UK and we want to support you on that journey. And ultimately, we know that happier nurses equals better patient care. So it's win win for everybody. So this is a um, this is a sort of framework in terms of your journey into the UK with the Devon International Recruitment Alliance. So obviously we will give you support with the NMC process. Um, and as I said earlier, we are going to be doing these webinars every three weeks. Um, the next webinar, we're going to have a focus on the Nursing and Midwifery Council. So they are our governance for registered nurses within the UK. Now, a lot of you will already be in the process of registering with the NMC, um, but we can talk through exactly what you need to do for those of you that haven't started that yet and maybe still studying your English. And, and we do have very close links with the NMC within the team. Um, we can always get advice quickly or offer support. So that that's uh, that's something worth knowing. So obviously everybody that's on this call and people that we interviewed in Dubai, you will know if you were successful or not because we told people on the day you would receive that job offer. And within the offer letter, it will say exactly what the offer is um, in terms of salary, flights, visa, certificates of sponsorship. So um, if you've got any questions about that, just pop it in the chat. Now we do offer, we will offer educational support through webinars. So we are doing some tailored webinars for you. This is number one for our Dubai nurses, but we also do um, we do regular Thursday morning webinars, um, which is 10 to 11 on a range of subjects. And I'll talk about our YouTube channel shortly. So as part of that onboarding process and, and when we're getting nearer for you to be redeployed to Devon, we will introduce you to your diaspora group. So the diaspora groups are there to offer you additional support. So there is a diaspora group depending on what country you you are trained in or when, where you were born. So, for example, there's a Filipino Nurses Association, there's an Indian Nurses Association, and they will be part of your family when you come to the UK. Um, we'll talk about the pastoral passport. That's another document um, that has got a plethora of advice and support for you that you can read through um, based on information about the trust, about the OSCE down to what to pack in your suitcase, depending on what season you're going to arrive in the UK, because the UK is very special in that we do have our seasons and the weather can change quite a lot depending on what time of year you arrive. 
we will also introduce you to your clinical team so you will get to meet your manager before you even arrive to the UK and that's really important you get to meet them then you've, you know a friendly face for that first day in your new ward in Devon um, you know somebody and that really reduces that anxiety and fear um, we also arrange uh, so groups tend to arrive in our Devon hospitals as, as a cohort um, and then that cohort will arrive within a couple of days of each other. We arrange WhatsApp group chats for those cohorts so you can all make friends with each other, get to know each other. It might be that you make a friend then who's on the same flight as you, um, but we will, we will check in with you and have pre-arrival meetings before you arrive over here. Within about a week of arriving in the UK, we will do a catch up with you, a post arrival meeting with your cohort. We're also there on WhatsApp to make sure everything's fine, um, iron out any problems that you may have had on arrival. The clinical teams are also part of those WhatsApp group chats, so they are there and on site to help you. So, for example, if you've got problems with accommodation like heating or your key doesn't work, there are people on site who can help you with that. Um, we're also in the process of setting up a Devon International Recruitment Support Network for nurses. So that's very um, in its early days at the moment, but we're hoping that will really be a signpost for you um, in terms of career progression. And we're going to be hosting monthly meetings for that um, that will be free to access. And we're so keen to support you with your ongoing career development. And um, already we link nurses in with different developmental programmes. And in fact, a few months ago, um, we managed to get some of our nurses onto a leadership programme before they'd even arrived into Devon. So that's just wonderful. So this is our pastoral passport. You will be sent this when you have your certificate of sponsorship issued, OK? And you can see there's a lot in here. It's quite a hefty document. It will be emailed to you. Um, so webinar information is in there. There is a full list of diaspora contact details and we really strongly recommend you get in touch with your relevant diaspora group because they really will be part of your family in the UK. There's a packing guide in there telling you what to bring, telling you what type of plug you might need. Emergency contact numbers are in there and that's really important in case you do have any problems on those first few days. <clears throat> Like I've said, there's information on the weather in there, dependent on what season you arrive in. And there's information in there about accommodation. So as your offer letter says, you will receive eight weeks of free accommodation. So a lot of the questions we get asked in terms to accommodation is, is it fully furnished? Do I need to bring pots and pans? The answer is it's fully furnished, okay? If you've got a favorite pot or plate that you want to bring, that's absolutely fine, but you don't have to. There's a good section in here on health and well-being um, and there's a very robust well-being support. Um, it doesn't matter which hospital you go to, it's the same for all of Devon and there's um, numbers in there and contacts of, of who, to, who to reach out to should you need to. For example, counselling services, um, it's all in there. So the OSCE handbook is part of this and that talks to you about the skill stations in the OSCE and gives you just a brief overview of what the OSCE is. There's also a list of common abbreviations. Um, so that gives you a really good idea of things to listen out to during those first few weeks of shifts within your first clinical, um, in your clinical environment in Devon. Um, some of the abbreviations you may not have come across before, and it can be quite disconcerting sometimes in handover if the nurses are given abbreviations and you don't know what they are. So that list is in there for that reason. There's a section in there on career development and the also important how to make a Devon cream tea. And I have got <laughs> specialist, I've got a specialist webinar on that on the YouTube channel. I would strongly recommend you watch it because you need to know whether to put cream or jam first um, and that's vitally important coming to Devon. So this is just a snapshot of some of our webinars that we've done in the past. Um, so you can see there's a whole host of information on there. They are all free for you to access. We are an NHS team. Um, and all of this is free for you to access and there to support you. So we've got webinars on there from Dementia Nurse Specialists. That's a superb talk on there. Please watch it. We've had quite a lot of the diaspora talk, um, groups come along to tell you about the support that they can give you. 
there's some sessions in there on the OSCE in the exam. There's a very good session on there on, with a tissue viability specialist nurse from one of our Devon hospitals. And there's also a really good one on there from Brian Parosha, one of our nurses in North Devon, who talked about the cost of living in the UK but that, because that was one of the most commonly asked questions. So have a look at that. <clears throat> They're all on there. Tell your friends about it and um, you will probably get a lot of advice from those webinars. So this is our nursing in Devon YouTube channel. So I've just done some screenshots there so you know what to look for. So um, have a look. We Put the link in the chat. Thank you. We upload our webinars on there on a regular basis and the webinar that we are running now, we will email that out to all of the Dubai nurses that were offered jobs because we know a lot of you are working shifts and it's really hard to get the right time for everybody. Um, but we will be emailing this one out. So this, this was just said in the North Devon recruitment video, but Brian, he said in his webinar, and you'll hear it when he talks about the cost of living, he said, I've come to Devon and I don't want to leave. And that is a consistent theme from our nurses. Um, once you've come to Devon, you never want to leave. It, it's a beautiful part of the UK to live and work in, and you can really get that work-life balance right. So lastly, a huge congratulations. You have made the absolute right choice to come and work in Devon. You've met all of the team here this morning. You can see that we are here to hold your hand through every step of the way. Please do not be frightened to ask any questions. We're here to guide you and support you. And then lastly, just, just a few photos of some of our nurses that have arrived since last year um, in Devon. And the key thing from this for me is everybody's smiling everybody's happy and we want you to be happy so please ask us any questions that you've got so we've got a question about um the process for nmc registration um tracy's answered it but it'll be nice probably to talk through it as well yeah that's fine so in regards to nmc registration process um we emailed out a really good handbook from the NMC in regards to the steps you need to take to register from overseas and our next webinar in a few weeks, we will send it all out to you. We're going to talk about the NMC process, but I have actually I'll see if I can screenshot. Um, here we go. Let's see if I can share it. Right, I'm going to screen share again. Yep, fine. Uh, NMC, here we go. OK, can you see that? Yeah, lovely. So we are going to talk about this in a few weeks time. We'll have a whole webinar focused on registering with the NMC. This is just a first look. So the NMC is a nursing, nursing and midwifery council and you will have to register with them to work as a registrant in the UK. OK, this is our registration board. So myself and Tracy, we are both on the nursing register with the NMC. Um, it's mandate that we have to be on that register to practice. Now, um, this is the website. Have a look. There is a lot of information on there about how to register from outside the UK. Um, and there is a really good step by step process um, which gives you checklists and a really easy to use guide on whether you're ready and what you need to do next. Obviously, we do have links with the NMC, um, so any questions you've got, then please let us know. But I would strongly recommend you start to have a look on the website and start to go down through the process to check exactly what it is that you need um, and what you need to do just to start to get yourself organised. All right. OK. So I just see another question. What's the process once the English exam is done? So. Once you've passed your OET or your IELTS, obviously you need to have started that registration process with the NMC. You can start that now. You don't have to wait for your English. Um, you can start getting your documents into the NMC. Go onto the website I've just shared and have a look and start to work your, yourself down through the process. They will require a lot of your documentation and that takes a little while to go through. So my advice is to start that earlier rather than later. You don't have to wait to get your English. Because if you're in a position there where you can go, once you've got your English, that's the last thing that needs to go in. And then you would be in a position to take your computer based test, which is a multiple choice exam of 150 questions. Um, so that would be the next step of the process. 
So, Laura, I didn't know if you just wanted to talk a little bit more about the WhatsApp groups that we set up and the support that you offer. I would love to. So when you get your um, your cause and your um, designation from the hospital that you're going to, I'll send you all an email out and I'll ask you to get in touch with me on, on WhatsApp. And then from there, I will set up a WhatsApp group for you all to communicate with. Carly and myself will be in there as well as a representative from your hospital. So you can ask us any questions, you can talk to each other and it's also really handy, you know, when you arrive and you say, oh, I'm here, you know, where is everybody? Or um, I've seen nurses when they are at the airport and they say, oh, I'm here, but where is everybody? And someone will say, oh, we're at check and desk five and I'm wearing a yellow top or something. So it's just really nice to get that connection where you all kind of chat to each other before you arrive and you, and you just get that that sense of, of, of family already because you are a family and you live and work together and you study for your OSCEs together and and you are a family and you, you're kind of connected in the same journey so it's lovely and obviously the WhatsApp groups kind of stay open so you can still talk to us whenever you when, when you're here and if, if you want to connect in with us then then you know you've got that opportunity to do so so yes it's definitely a nice way to be able to keep you kind of you know together and and available to contact if we need to and if you need to contact us so it's really nice that's lovely thank you laura okay so i think we're just coming to the end now of our first dubai webinar for you i hope you've all found it useful we will be sending this webinar out to everybody for those that have been working and like i said the next one will be about the nmc process but we just wanted to start to talk about Devon and the hospitals so you can start to think about exactly where you want to work. So I don't know if anybody Holly, else just, has anything to add. Yes, on. yeah, just a very brief one. Yeah, yeah. just a couple of things. Um, I don't know, Laura, if you could put in the chat the links for our Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. I know you've put YouTube in there, but um, just uh, that's really important for everybody to join so you can see some of the activity um, that's taking place. But I know just in the chat, there's been lots of questions in terms of how quickly causes can be issued. Um, and, and I have put some responses in there, but basically um, it depends how quickly you can send your documents to us. The sooner you do that, um, the sooner we can start the process of issuing your certificates of sponsorship and your visa. Um, I know one couple that we um, we interviewed in Dubai, um, their documents are already here and will be, they're being deployed to Plymouth in June. So that is incredible from interview to arriving in the UK and in Plymouth um, uh, within what six weeks I mean that that is absolutely incredible which which is great so please do this is the you know the sooner you can you know get your documents all sent through um, as Carly mentioned please you don't need to wait to register with the NMC um, or to take your CBT you don't need to wait until you've passed your English language um, that all speeds up the process your CBT is valid for two years I think Carly isn't it um, but I know in for, for those of you who need to still pass your English language um, and CBT obviously you have the six months um, to do that so please you know um, do focus and put that time and energy now into passing your exam and reviewing for your exam you can you've seen today a little taste of um, of Devon and the wonderful hospitals and locations that we have to offer you will have a choice of where you want to come and live and work um, so, you know, we hope that will give you some real enthusiasm, um, you know, to come and, and work with us. So, you know, we can't wait to, to meet you all, um, you know, over the next few weeks and months. We're hoping to be back in Dubai again in a few weeks. I think given we've met so many wonderful people last week and we know a lot of friends and there was a lot of people recommended certainly Lee Ju, Lee Ju if you're on the call a big shout out and hello to Lee Ju. I know <laughs> uh, he recommended lots of people <laughs> to come and see us last week which was great um, but we are still um, offering interviews although they're virtual at the moment until we can come out again but please do if you've got um, family friends that are nurses that want to come and uh, and work with us then please pass on um, 
the details and they can apply through to our website. You can apply um, direct, but we'll keep you updated as well in terms of dates. We're hoping it's going to be probably June um, that we'll be coming to visit you all again. So we'll, we'll be happy to see you all as well if there's any questions and things when we're out there. So um, we will let you know. But yes, that's all for me. But anyway, it's wonderful. Our first Dubai webinar and it's great to see we've had quite a few attendees as well. So hopefully we'll see you uh, on, on the others that are coming up as well. So that's great. Thank Lovely. you. Thanks, Tracy. And as you said, we can move as quickly as you can really in regards to your paperwork. Um, so, yeah, paperwork, paperwork, paperwork at the moment. It is, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's just been a couple of questions about family, people bringing family over with them first yeah. time. So, yeah. so, so uh, basically the the accommodation is single accommodation only for all of our hospitals in Devon um, and we've recruited international nurses for a long time and we strongly advise that you come along on your own because we only provide single accommodation. You get your pin number, you get yourself sorted and then you bring your families over once you've found family accommodation. Um, I've known of maybe one instance where someone found their own family accommodation and obviously you would have to source that yourself not being in the UK, which is no easy task and they found it really hard. Um, so from our experience, come in on your own. I know that's hard. Um, but just invest those first few months in yourself. Study, get your OSCE, get your PIN, find family accommodation and then bring your families over. Um, and that short amount of time is a massive investment for your futures. Oh, hi, Meryl. Yeah, <laughs> you've got your documentation. Thank you for that. It's lovely to see you. Oh, <laughs> lovely. That's right. it. That's everything. Thanks for being so interactive, guys, with all your questions. And we will send out another webinar for the, in a couple of weeks time. We'll talk about N NMC registration, but give us feedback. If there's anything that you'd really like yeah. to see, let us know. Um, we're on Facebook, we're on yes, Instagram. Please join. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, give us a like, give us a laugh, give us a share. <laughs> and um, it's been great to see you all and we'll catch up soon. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone. Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye, -bye.